Welcome to another episode of the Puff Puff Hour, a Dragon Quest podcast. I am your host, Caleb Craig. And I'm your other host, Jacob Bray. And Cricket Sounds, because Dylan isn't here. Yep. Uh, so He's in, gone for a good reason. So. Yeah, yeah, he uh, hits grandma's birthday, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully she won't die. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, everyone dies. But not today. So uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, Koichi Sujiyama. The, uh, it's a good thing for you saying that because I would have pronounced that wrong. <laughs> um, he's the music director for uh, Dragon Quest series. Yeah, composer, whatever. Fuck it. Uh, for uh, the Dragon Quest series. So, yeah. And apparently a hell of a lot more when I was researching this. Oh, yeah. He's he's well, done other hell, stuff. But quite a few in the anime and Japanese department and films. Yeah, and a handful for films, handful for games outside of the Dragon Quest series. Yeah. I, yeah. I had. No knowledge of almost any of the things on this list until yeah, I looked uh, it up. So this will be interesting when we list it off. Yeah, I didn't know maybe, some of these uh, were him. So I Maybe some of you have even actually heard of some of these games because I haven't. Because a lot of them never released outside of Japan to begin with. So, so throughout this episode you're going to hear great Dragon Quest music and a couple of the songs that I think are pretty cool that he did from stuff that wasn't Dragon Quest related. So he was born April 11th, 1931. Oh, his birthday was like two days ago. Yes. Great timing for this episode, I guess. Yeah. So he's a composer, a conductor, and a orchestrator. He is also a council member on the Japanese Society for Rights of Authors, Composers, and Publishers. Apparently the J A S R A C Jasrek. <laughs> fucking acronym sometimes <laughs> just it's just do every letter of the goddamn alphabet. Um, a board member of the Jap- Japan Institute for National Fundamentals, an honorary chairman of the Japanese Backgammon Society. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Never played backgammon. I have not either. I don't even know how you play it. I've seen the board and it makes no fucking sense to me. <laughs> Me either. Like the triangles and yeah. Never tried to. But uh, Sujiyama is best known for composing the music for the Dragon Quest video game series. A classically trained conductor, Sujiyama is considered a major inspiration for other Japanese gay music composers such as Nobu Uematsu. And was once referred to as the big boss of video game music. Dun dun. Which is kind of true. He's inspired a lot of uh, music for. Um RPGs and stuff. Yeah. Over the years, because fucking Dragon Quest itself was like the most influential RPG of all time. So early on in life, Sujiyama was born in Tokyo, Japan. While growing up, Sujiyama's home was filled with music, which ultimately inspired his passion. In high school, he began to recognize his passion and wrote various small musical works. After graduating from the University of Tokyo with full honors in 1958 ancient. He went into reporting and entertainment sections of cultural broadcasting. In addition, he joined the Fuji Telecasting Company as a director in 1965. He left the telecasting company as a freelance director, and in 1968, he quit directing and concentrated solely on musical composition and orchestration. During the late 70s and early 80s, Sujiyama composed for musicals, commercials, pop artists, and for animated movies as well as television sh- shows such as Science Ninja Team Got- Gatchaman, the movie The Sea Prince and the Fire Child, and Cyborg 009. Ah, oh, fuck, man. I loved Cyborg 009 as a kid. I watched that anime all the fucking time. Huh.
He also assisted Richiro Manambe with the composition for Godzilla vs. Hedora, composing the record single of the soundtrack and conducting for some of the tracks. Yeah. Freaking uh, our other podcast, um, the Godzilla podcast yes. uh, with Joe and Drew. Uh, yes. They recently reviewed that movie, I think. Yes, and they referenced us, so we're referencing them back. Go check that out. Yeah. He also did the other one. That I'm not sure if it's later on in here. What was the one I was talking to you about uh, I think, earlier? Yeah, I think you said Godzilla versus Biolante or something like Biolante. that. Biolante, yeah. yeah. Biolante. He did like the whole thing for that one. Oh, instead, instead of just, just like uh, helping out? Yeah. Hmm. Some crossover there. Yep. Uh, Sujiyama's first contact with Enix was by a fan letter he wrote them regarding a PC shoji game. Shogi. Shogi. Okay. In the early 1980s, after Enix's staff overcame the shock of receiving a handwritten postcard from a celebrity of Sujiyama's satire. Stature. Stature. <laughs> I'll edit that out. <laughs> They were so impressed by the depth of knowledge and appreciation of games that they decided to ask Sujiyama to create music for their games. He started composing for the PC-8801 and was working for Enix at the time. His first project with Enix was the 1985 game World Golf. Dun, dun, dun. In 86, he composed for his first major project, Dragon Quest, for the Famicom. It would become the series he would be most known for. Sujiyama says it took him five minutes to compose the original opening theme. How ironic. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> because another composer said it took five minutes for the other most famous theme. The fucking Final Fantasy pl- prelude. Yep. It's like, all right, let's just... Uh, now they got to do all their music in like five minutes. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's revolutionary. Best music is, you know, when time is crunching down on the clock. <laughs> Sujiyama was the first video game composer to record his video game music with a live orchestra. In 86, the CD Symphonic Suit was released, utilizing the London Philharmonic Orchestra to interpret Sujiyama's melodies. The soundtrack's eight melodies, opening, castle, town, field, dungeon, battle, final battle, and ending, set the template for most RPG video game soundtracks released since then, hundreds of which have been organized in a similar manner. Yeah, fucking everybody who worked on the original Dragon Quest just fucking, like, making history. Yeah. They all are rooted in our JRPG history right there. In 1987, he started work on Dragon Quest II. And then held the very first video game music concert in history. Family Classic Concert was arranged and conducted by him, his self. It was performed by the Tokyo String Music Combination Playing Group on August 20, 1987 at Suntory Hall, Tokyo, Japan.
The first symphonic suit and the second symphonic suit were performed together. The family classic concerts have always had excellent turnouts since then. Sujiyama has held over 18 of them all across Japan. That's not that many in like 30 fucking years. <laughs> Yeah, that's not too many. Yeah. Uh, from 1987 to 1990, Sujiyama continued to compose for various other Enix games. In 91, he introduced a series of video game music concerts, five in all, called the or- Orchestral Game Concerts, which were performed by the Tokyo City Philharmonic Orchestra and the Symphony Tokyo Symphony Orchestra. The performances included over 18 different video game composers, such as Koji Kondo, Yoko Kano, Nobuo Uematsu, Kichi Suji Suzuki as well as Sujiyama himself. These concerts were held from 91 to 96, well before what was that concert play? Like everybody thought that play was so revolutionary here in the states when they're like, "Oh, we're going to do video game soundtracks across the United States with uh, this yeah. thing." Like people are way fucking behind. <laughs> It would have been cool to see one of those oh, fucking definitely. like eighteen I, I think different there's composers. Like YouTube videos of. Well, oh, I don't know yeah. if it's the eighteen uh, composer one, but there's videos of those old concerts together up on YouTube. I'm yeah, shocked I they haven't so, been taken yeah. down yet. All the fucking copyright claims. It needs to happen again. <laughs> oh yeah. Fucking. I mean, I, I saw Distant Worlds so, with uh, Joe and Schweiss for. Um, uh, that uh, over in uh, New, Khan, Jersey. New Jersey, yeah, for <sighs> Kubukan. But uh, man, it would be sweet to see like eighteen different composers. You know, Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, fucking these other uh, these other guys' works. Oh yeah, I'm not sure what what uh, I don't I recognize Koji Kondo, but I don't know what what he's done. I'm not sure either, but that would be awesome. Just a whole bunch of composers in the same room together. Yeah, I know, fucking eighteen different ones doing like. Soundtracks for games that were like peak uh, uh, around um, the PlayStation time is when he was doing the fucking concerts. Uh, Mario and Zelda. Oh, is it? Oh, that's why I know him. Okay. Yeah. Mario and Zelda. That's Great good, stuff. Those are good ones, especially Zelda's. In September of 95, Sujiyama composed the Dragon Quest Ballet. Ooh. <laughs> It premiered in 96 and returned in 97, 99, 2001, and 2002. During those years, he also released the Symphonic Suits for Dragon Quest games he had worked on thus far. So, 3, 4, 5, and 6. In late 2004, he finished and released Dragon Quest VIII's soundtrack and conducted the eight Symphonic Suit in 2005. He was, uh, in 2005, Sujiyam was holding a series of concerts in Japan with the Metropolitan Symphony Orchestra of Tokyo with music from Dragon Quest VIII as well as his classic compositions from the past. In August, his music from Dragon Quest was performed live at the European Symphonic Game Music Concert. There, for the first time, his music was pre- presented in a live symphonic concert outside of Japan. Sujiyama returned once again to compose the music for Dragon Quest X, which we'll never get, and its expansions, whatever and whatever. Sujiyama's non-work related hobbies include photography, traveling, building model ships, collecting old cameras, and reading. He has opened a camera section on his website, and he has also had his own record label, Suji Label, which he starred in 2004. Sujiyama has also completed other projects, such as the fanfares for the opening and closing of the gates in the Tokyo Racetrack and the Nakayama Racetrack. Nice. Uh, For his style throughout Sujiyama's works, motifs repeat themselves to maintain a consistency and nostalgic quality in the different installments. Oh, yeah, especially- you can feel that playing the games. You're like, I feel like I've heard this song before. Again and again and again, but yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm, I guess we notice it more when we're playing through all of them in a row. Yeah. Within, like, months of each other. Yeah. Instead of, like, playing them well, at the years we're going, span. They are months. <laughs> <laughs> Taking our time. <laughs> <clears throat> for these later ones, yeah. Yeah. But for uh, Dragon Quest 3 through 9, it includes a simple casual tune on the save game section called Intermezzo. His uh, style of composition has been compared to late Baroque and early classical period styles. Composers, composers such as Joan Sebastian Bach, 
Gustav Mahler and George Frederick Handel are some of his inspirations, along with the type of melodic styles heard during the mid-20th century of American cinema. The influence of Arno Sch- Schoenberg? Thank you, Craig. Can also be heard in some of his more experimental compositions, notably starting from Dragon Quest IV. I wasn't able to dig up a lot of information about his early life, and it seems to be that's how the Dragon Quest team works. They yeah, don't seem they to like, be that bubble. They like their privacy. Yeah, yeah, I know that Toriyama is like really private. Oh, yeah. And I've seen photos where he just holds up a picture of his artwork to cover his face. He's really secluded. Yeah. Part yeah. of that could be because he blew the fuck up. Like fucking Dragon Quest and Dragon Ball just like took off. Yeah. They they I couldn't imagine. Yeah, he's he got famous real fucking quick when he started doing uh doing his art. And aside from that one random like personal thing oh, with Dr. Hori, Sil- yeah, Dr. Silvano or whatever it was. Um but the thing with Hori and you know his divorce from the wife and stuff. Yeah, Other yeah. than that though, Hori's the wasn't only even one that, that really has any kind of open openness really. Yeah. But for the most part, they keep to themselves. But some of the uh, the works that Sujiyama did outside of... Uh, Let's see. It's uh, Skyers, uh, The Return for Ultraman, the opening theme. Um, Machine Hayabusa. Uh, These yeah. were all the opening themes. Science Ninja Team, Gotcha Man, Cyborg 009, Jigoku Numoshi, uh, Space Runaway Ideon. Uh, Cyborg 009, uh, Legend of Super Galaxy. Never fucking heard of that. <laughs> uh, the Sea Prince and the Fire Child, The Yearling, Godzilla vs. Biolante, uh, Magic Knight Ravirth, um, Magic Knight Ravirth 2. For the, those were the movies and uh, televisions. So. And for video games, uh, World Golf. And its sequels. Um, Wingman 2. Oh, fucking Jesus. Kyofu no Bio Monster. Yeah, Jesus and uh, Bio Monster. What the hell title is this? What I, game is this? I want to I wanna find that game now. What the shit is that? Gandahara Buddha no Sensen. Animal yeah. Land. <laughs> uh, Satsugin Jiken. Master of uh, Monsters. Yeah, World Golf 2. Fucking Wingman Special. Saraba Yume Senshi. Tetris 2 and Bombless and Evo Search for Eden. <laughs> Angelicus, Actually, I've heard of Evo, Search for Eden. Uh, Angelicus, The Gospel of Evil. What is he doing with this? He's like fucking, oh man, Jesus oh. 2. Yes, the sequel. Passion man. of the Christ 2. <laughs> fucking, He's I need... coming back John Wick style. Right, with I'm, a whole I'm bunch totally going to look up nails. these games. I want to I wanna see what this is. He's coming back to hang a whole bunch of people via nails. Oh He's man, that'd John be, Wick. That would be fucked up. But... <laughs> I mean, like, fucking sacrilegious, like, crazy, but it's tempting <laughs> to play. Uh, Akigawa a Jiro no Yure Resha? Uh, Master of Monsters? Yeah, the te- Tetris in Bombless and Evo Search for Eden. Huh. Some interesting, interesting works. Have heard of none of these? Yeah. Um, I don't think I've even heard of World Golf. <laughs> Until, like, looking this up. Huh. Certainly interesting. So. All right, yeah, that uh, the Jesus, though. That's the most interesting thing I've ever seen, and I need to look it up. Yeah. So. All right, I'm going to do it right now. So whether you actually, like, enjoy his music or not, I think his early compositions that he's continued to use and change the themes, like, maybe change the tempo a little bit, but you could still tell it's the same song or legendary. And I hope that he did more compositions here and there, but what he has done has been legendary. And I would say that those early themes are just as good as Naboo's works, but it's the fact that he hasn't created any like new monumental stuff in a long time. That's kind of like the downside because 
things like Dragon Quest Nine and Eleven soundtracks just really lackluster to me. I guess it's and a graphic they, adventure game. Ooh, graphic uh, novels. It's on the fucking the Famicom. Yeah, all oh, NES stuff. It, it makes sense because you know all the uh, MIDI samples that Sujiyama likes to use. Oh, okay. So the game's name refers to a space station called Jesus. <laughs> Uh, named after the Christian Messiah Jesus. Really? Yeah, yeah, you never would have guessed that. Um, wow. And uh, the ship is shaped like a double-edged sword, a la the Book of Revelation. Oh, yeah. And its inhabitants go on to fight mysterious demonic aliens from Halley's Comet. That sounds amazing. Yes, it does, but it's probably a horrible game. Uh, fuck, man. Dumb. Okay, so okay, so the gameplay it's like uh the game is a linear adventure game and you choose an action to take uh and what tr- actions you want to do. Uh these actions are vary on the room and situation. So I guess it's just like one of those like early uh uh like Zork, you know, those uh Oh, t- text based. The, yeah, the text adventure games, but yeah. you just kind of like Ch- text choose your maybe own maybe it's kind of like a point and click type thing, but you just like choose what your thing is, huh? Yeah, well, Jesus, it does monsters. not seem to be possible to lose the game. Oh, come on! Yeah, it's easy mode activated. Three main sections of the game. First yeah, section well, yeah. is mostly just an introduction to the characters. Okay. We don't believe in easy mode, do we, Craig? <laughs> I do still kind of want to play this. See what the fuck. Oh man, it sounds it sounds amazing. To be honest, I, I really. Uh, yeah, it, it's okay. So the tide the the title is Jesus Dreadful Bio Monster. It's great. That cover looks yeah. fucking sweet, dude. Look at that. Yeah, that does. I'll put that Fucking up in the like episode's heavily eighties anime, super realistic looking. Yeah. I, I guess going from like <laughs> Jesus versus a bio monster it makes sense on how like one of the later works he decided to score, you know, Godzilla versus Yeah. Whatever. It kind of fits the motif. Oh man, I'm gonna have to look up like an emulator for these. If yeah. I can play that Jesus and Jesus two. <laughs> Beseat my son edition. <laughs> oh man. The no. Iron Cross edition. <laughs> it comes with your own eight inch statuette of Jesus <laughs> hanging from the nails. <laughs> now I gotta like I gotta tw- uh, tweet out to to score Annex and be like, alright guys, I need a Jesus a three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gotta make it happen. Well, we don't even know who published those uh, games. I think it was Square or Enix. It was, it was Enix. Enix. Okay, hold on. Hold on. It was published by Enix, yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus 3 coming. Yeah, Jesus dude. and Mother 3 combo. Okay, so they totally still own those properties, and I, I gotta, we got to have them make, remake Jesus. <laughs> you mean perhaps re- you resurrect him? The re- Reboot Pun. of Jesus. Puns. <laughs> Coming okay. Easter <laughs> Sunday. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm definitely gonna fucking uh, tweet out to Okay, no, I'm just gonna do that now on the show. Why not? Be like, hey, hey Score Enix, I I need you to do me a favor and revive Jesus. <laughs> Oh wow! It's been more yes. than three days. <laughs> it's been more than three days since his last resurrection. What are you doing? Uh, okay. Right, oh see. wow! So that was the quick and brief history of Koichi Sujiyama. So, yeah, we we want to know what you guys think of his compositions. Is uh, is it time for him to throw down the uh, the mantle down to someone else, or do you think at like eighty eight <clears throat> years old he's got anything left in him? Uh, I would like to have him kind of um, 
ease out work. I, I, so he would uh, collaborate on stuff with people right. instead of just doing it all himself. Um, kind of like the way Naboo went out the door with FF. Kind of, yeah. Like mixing up 10s and 12s. It kind of seems with- to be his only work now. Uh, so... Yeah, you know, uh, if he's gonna, if he wants to help out, let him help out. But I would like other people to start doing some more music for for Dragon Quest. Yeah, kind of get a new thing in there because uh, I mean I I enjoy his work, um, but they they do tend to be kind of more bland They've than bland. than some other uh, game soundtracks. I mean, he does mostly do kind of like the ambiance type thing, but he was revolutionary at one time, and now Dragon Quest XI's only weak point is really its its soundtrack. So Agreed. <clears throat> I mean, it just kind of feels like it's time for him to maybe move on. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. There's that. So hopefully you guys enjoy this episode. So... Until next time, keep it super and keep it questy. Yeah.